Let's face it, NASA can hold all the astronaut roundups they want, but the perfect candidate might be built, not recruited. Hey there, Robos. Trace here for DNews. Thanks for tuning in. Robonauts, or robot astronauts, are designed to work alongside the world's human astronauts, doing experiments, repairing the International Space Station, and helping out wherever they can. Robonaut is called a dexterous robot because it has human-like hands. But other versions are mounted on wheels or have primate-like dexterous feet as well. Robonaut is built to float in space or be put onto a planet after all, so it may as well get the best use out of its lower extremities. A few weeks ago, to promote the DVD release of The Martian, I was given an up-close look at Robonaut during a tour of the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Obviously, I geeked out all over that place, especially the space vehicle mock-up facility. That place was super cool. I had a quick conversation there with CJ Canalakos, one of the Robonaut's engineers. So, these are space robots. That's incredible. First of all, I've been wanting to meet Robonaut since you guys announced Robonaut. So, can you tell me a little bit about why we want to send robots into space as opposed to humans or with humans? I guess both. So, we definitely want to send robots into space with humans. Uh, the human aspect is very important to uh, human spaceflight and to spaceflight in general. So, you know, humans are much more capable of doing uh, detailed exploration work than robots. However, uh, robots can serve as an incredible assistant to those humans in the, in the right environment. So part of the reason that we want to send robonauts or robots to space with people is to assist them. Um, so for example, we can have robonaut do jobs that are either dirty uh, for, the, for humans or dangerous or even just dull and repetitive. Um, so there's several reasons that we would want to send robonauts or robots in general um, to space with humans. So that sounds not unlike having robots here on Earth. You know, we're using them for jobs that maybe would be too difficult or too taxing for a human to do either repeatedly or at all. Um, you were mentioning earlier that the robot was better at taking certain measurements than the humans were. Could you kind of expand on that again? So one of the tasks that we actually had Robonaut do as a demonstration on the International Space Station was to hold a probe. So um, we can basically tell the robot to stop and go whenever we want or to pause or freeze. So we were able to use that to our advantage um, in taking a measurement that required or would require a human to be very, very still as they're taking that measurement. But for the robot, we could just pause it and tell it to freeze in its position. And then it's not going to move unless it's acted on by an external force. So basically, it's going to stay in the position that we leave it. So why make them humanoid? I mean, other than the fact that they look really cool. But, but why humanoid robots? I mean, instead of more specialized task robots. So the human element of it, of the Robonaut, actually makes it capable of working um, in the same environment or the same workspace as people, which gives us an advantage because we don't have to have specific robots for every single different task that we might need to perform or we don't have to have specific tools for every task that, that the robot might need to perform. So this robot is capable of working with the same tools or very similar tools as humans. So in the spaceflight environment especially, that's important because we don't have room, we don't have mass to send up special tools for the robot to use that are different from humans. So that's one advantage to having the human aspect of it. And the other is that it can work in the same workspace or environment as people. And so um, even though this robot is a little bit bigger uh, end of the human spectrum, it can still work generally in the same environment as people versus um, very large robots that maybe are performing much more specific tasks. Um, you know, in the factory environment, they're lifting things that are a lot heavier, things like that. But this robot um, is very capable and also um, fits the, the profile that allows it to, to work in the same environment as humans. What about sending robots to Mars? Would we want to send a humanoid robot? We haven't been there. There are no environments there that are human specific. So in your view, do you think humanoid robot or something more akin to the original? So I think uh, maybe a combination would be a good choice. The humanoid robot aspect of it would definitely, again, allow us to, to use some of the same tools that we might need to have there for the astronauts anyway. And the robot, or uh, Robonaut presumably, could go and set up a workspace for people, could go and set up their habitat. You know, it could build things for the humans before they come and sort of lay a foundation for them. Now, whether or not that means 
means walking legs um, or a mobile platform, a wheeled platform, something like that. I think that's all still to be determined. But um, yes, I mean, obviously our robotics group definitely sees advantages to sending a humanoid robot to Mars to pave the way for people. Great, thank you. While there weren't any robots working alongside humans in the movie The Martian, real NASA missions to Mars will probably and hopefully have a robotic component. That way they'll be able to do more science more precisely and without the danger of interplanetary travel shouldered by human explorers alone. If you haven't seen The Martian yet, you can download it today, December 22nd, or buy the Blu-ray or the DVD on January 12th. Robonaut isn't the only robot CJ and her colleagues at Johnson have dreamed up. A couple of years ago, they announced Valkyrie, who looks incredible. I made this really, really weird old video talking about it. Valkyrie is 6'2 and weighs about 280 pounds, and though he's a heavyweight, it can walk, and unlike the Atlas robot out of DARPA's lab, it doesn't have a tether. I bet it feels like the doctor from Voyager. I'm free! Oh my god. So old, what is with my hair? Anyway, space robots are super cool, obviously, but there is no substitute for putting humans on another planet, right? Would you rather have robots exploring space or people? Let us know down in the comments, and thanks for watching D News, everybody. We'll see you next time.